Now I chose the topic uh, locking plate is a boon or a bane. The reason I chose it is because of the same point that I wanted to bring in because locking plates is widely used. In the bargain, the other implants is slowly getting forgotten. So I thought majority of the implant failures that happen is also because of indiscriminate use of locking plates. I think if you, if you use locking plates wisely, and follow all the principles that both Farid and Ramesh Purmal has put it in, there should never be a problem. Suppose if you have a fracture like this elderly patient, and then there is a long spiral fracture, you know that once you have a locking plate put in, and then you can also use, because it's a pre-contoured plate, you keep it in position and then slowly bring the fragment to, into position with the, you can also pull the fragment to the plate and then get the reduction done with a good traction. I, I'm sure every one of you will get this type of reduction and fixation. It's a fairly simple type of a fracture. And also if you apply the principles like all the screws in the metaphysical region, 0.75 is the ratio. And in the diaphysis is the 0.5 is the ratio. Minimum three screws must be there. That is six cortical purchases. And if you use it, and then in between at the fracture site, if you have three holes that is left free, then it is one of the best fixation that you can ever get. So if you do that with the good principles of fixation, I am sure all the locking plates would work. But unfortunately, the fracture pattern may not allow you to do it every case. So sometimes you may have to use little plate that is shorter than what is expected of the three times the combination that you choose. Sometimes in a simple fracture, it is said that eight to 10 times the length of the fracture site is the length of the plate that you must choose, but that may not be always be possible. So having said that, if you take this picture, if you take this, it is not a, exactly a distal fracture that you think of as a locking plate situation. In fact, for this type of fracture, probably retrograde nail would be the best of the fixation that you can choose. However, you see, this is the plate that has been chosen. This is what I mean, see, often you tend to use the locking plates. So the indiscriminate use of locking plates is the one that is causing concern today in the, in the practice that we are seeing. So here you can see if you have used a retrograde nail, probably this would have worked well. But having said that you are using a locking plate, but you can also see the locking plate has been used fine. But thing is, if you fill up all the screws, then it makes the plate fixation as a very stiff implant. And then there is a point contact type of point uh, loading that happens at the fracture site and it is going to fail. And that's what has happened. So again, you see it is the plate that has been used correct, but whereas the principles are not followed. And that is what is important. And also the indication itself may be a wrong indication. You all know that in our scenario, when we have been practicing from the beginning, you can see that this is a distal femur that has worked well. This, our condylar blade plates have worked well. And if you see, we have used all the screws. This was the principle at that stage and that it went on to heal well. So there is no doubt about it that this will heal well when you fix all the screws. On the contrary, again, you look, when we were doing open injuries in the early days, we were still using all this uh, DCS. And then you see, we have fixed it. And also you see the plate was also not too long. It was also a short plate. All this worked well when it was like a conventional plates, regular plates that we were using. But nowadays it is the fixation principles are slightly getting changed, but you have to know that what type of plate you are using. The biological fixation also was used. Early days we were using a DCS for a biological plate fixation. So it is not that Locking plate is newer to you. Locking plate is something that it has to be understood well. Only thing you have to know is this is the Wagner's article in uh, German language. See, like the first it was a round hole. Then we have converted it to a DCS hole. Then PC fix came. And then slowly it evolved over to a combi hole. Before combi hole, it was a list system that came in where it was only the locking screws. But for a surgeon to choose a combi hole means in the intraoperative stage, he can choose various principles. That is the point by which this plate system came in. You can use this as a locking plate, as a sort of a primary fixation, like a DCS fixation. You can use it like only for 
neutralization plate or various pattern but like you can also use it like just like a peri implant fracture situations where it can be used just like your holding plate so very various principles can be used with this combi hole technique so having said that and when this came in what was to be taught was the mini max fixation so that means when this came in when you are using it as a biological principle you have to use it as a mini max fixer that means you have to use uh, it is like an external fixator so stay closer to the fracture site and expand up to the bone so it is exactly the same type of principles that came in and that is what you are using in for a bridge plate principle on the contrary whenever you want something like a non union when you are using a, a locking plate you are not going to use it like a bridge plate you will have to use compression contact and then you will have to make sure that your plate is really stiff and then you have to bring uh, biology everything so whereas on the contrary when there is comminution you are going to use it like a bridge plate fixation so when kreger at all when first he put it in this there was a lot of uh, frag 123 fractures you see 96% of them healed well when this new plate came in so with this caught up with the whole world and then everybody started using the locking plate and it really gave a good results locking plates are actually a boon because it is because of the nature it is like it is like a angle stable implant it is uh, you can use it for variety of uh, in, uh, variety of fracture fixations and all the fracture fixation if you use with the right principle i am pretty sure you can use it right and you can get a very good results but you see why i am putting this x ray is because you can see there is an interfragmentary screws that are going in here and then you can see one more screw that is going through the fracture site uh, that is along with the plate and then you see there are two screws that means this is neither a compression principle at the fracture site nor it is like a neutralization plate that you use for example early days what we were using if you use a spiral if you have a spiral fracture like this there will be one screw that is going at the end of this fracture site and another screw at this fracture site perpendicular to the fracture so it has to go at the perpendicular to the plane of the fracture and if you want in between one more screw you can add it so like that we were using like a in, it is like a interfragmentary fixation and then you use it as a neutralization device if that was used suppose if you have done the same principle and use this plate as a neutralization device it can still work well and also re remember like when th this unfortunately because of the pattern of fracture fix fixation it has failed otherwise this wouldn't have failed and also like you remember when in our early days this was the fracture that we have used and this is a, exactly like it is the ganga hospital score if you take it is the 13 that means we have to do a staged reconstruction and here again you see we have done all the fracture fixation but still we have maintained with the external fixator why did we do this with the external fixator purely because we know that there was a medial comminution we know that the lateral plate any plate for you to work well the opposite cortex must be intact that is the principle that you have to follow because you know that there is opposite cortex is not intact and we are using this plate and we have stabilized it with additional external fixator so that it doesn't go in for bending so if this could be applied at that many many years ago what has to be done is the similar principles that we need to follow so you, you have to use it why the advances you have to think where has the advances come and you have to apply those advances well in all these practices and this you can see you can it has gone on to heal well and gets a reasonably good result and here like what is important is now when we are all using the uh, uh, lcps a lot of failures are happening and we have found that it is mainly because of the medial void and if you, there is a medial void, of course, now already Ramesh as well as Parit Kagda has told, it is the dual plate that will work well when there is a medial void. So working length is something that has been ta taught to you. And then I said in the first slide, I said that three holes is generally sufficient for you to give a right elasticity and then it will go on to heal. But you see here, you have multiple holes that is nearly five to six holes are left empty here. And then in our practice, it is so difficult to decide what is the adequate length of the plate that has to be left free so that it is it is giving the right elasticity. But however, if you see read parents articles very well, if there is multiple fragmentation, suppose if there is a multiple fragmentation, you know that the strain pattern at each of the 
fracture fragment is reasonably good enough for the fracture healing. On the contrary, if there is a focal defect, suppose only one or one fragment is there, then it is going to be a focal defect. And those are the fractures where you will have excessive stress on the implant. And they are the one which will go and fail. See, you can see this has gone on to heal well. And also, like if you take any, any, any fixation that you want to do, look at this. This is one of the fractures that we fixed it. Any peri plant fracture, you see like this, any fracture that is with prosthesis, you have to get a right uh, alignment because for the longevity of the prosthesis, you have to definitely get into a correct alignment and axis and rotation, everything must be perfect. So here you can see once you give a traction, lot of the fragments will fall into position. And once they fall into position, you need to completely make sure that both in AP and lateral view, you are securing the uh, reduction. Suppose if there is any alignment change, you can also give a push from anterior or posterior side and then make it. If you make an incision here, what happens is, suppose if you want to see the entire uh, articular region, it is better your incision is closer to the patella so that you can turn the patella or shift the patella and then get the articular reduction done. Suppose if you are sure that you don't need much of articular reduction to be done, you can stay lateral and then it can be as minimal as possible. Once you do that, so you can see that here we are doing a lateral incision. And then as you incise it, you can see that it is released. And then one of the trick you must also do is to release the in, uh, uh, subcutaneous fascia. If you release the fascia, it will be easier for you to introduce the plate. And then when you are introducing the plate, so if initially itself, you check what is the level of combination and if your plate is three times the length of the combination, immediately check it and then slowly introduce it. Always stay closer to the bone. Make sure that you don't wobble anteriorly or posteriorly. If you are wobbling, then your soft tissue dissections will happen. So make sure that you are right on the bone and then as you complete it, go across the bone. And then at that stage, when you are sure that you are on the bone, then you put the pins both anteriorly and posteriorly. You can see that as you are sliding it up, as you stay closer to uh, bone, and then you make sure that the cretex technique can be used where you can put pin anterior to the plate and posterior to the plate so that it remains in position on the bone. So once you are, uh, you can see that I'm positioning the wires, and then if it, once it is done, you can see that the entire laterally it remains stable. And then you know that now you have got a reasonably good reduction and then now you complete on the distal metaphysis. Why I'm completing it on the distal metaphysis? Because now plate position was good enough. There is no problem with it, both anteriorly, that is AP and lateral view, your reduction was good. So once the distal metaphysis is secure, now it is question of only the proximally how you get the uh, fixation done properly. And at this stage, when you are doing this, <clears throat> You can see that now that I have completed it, and then as I complete the procedure, now I am focusing on the uh, reduction part of it. So once the reduction is maintained, one of the thing is now you saw that in the metaphysical area, so in the metaphysical area, you can see there was a gap over here. And then now you have to slightly try to close it off. The plate was also equally positioned. And then when you want to close this, the ways you can also do it is, you can get your uh, one of the screw inside and then try to pull the fragment. But when you pull the fragment, you are also lateralizing the entire shaft. So to prevent the lateralization of the shaft, you can put a small block. You can put a block that is, you can use a steenman pin, six mm steenman pin or something. Between the femur and the plate, you can put a block and then bring the fragment closer so that now, your shaft does not get lateralized. It will stay in that position. And then you can establish the medial continuity. So here I'm showing it because always remember that the plate, the combi hole is like, the conventional screw will be away from it. And then the locking screw will be closer to the fracture side. So that you have to always remember it. And then based on that, you can also, when you are using the, uh, your fixation, you will be, it will be easier for you to understand that. And then you can see now slowly bring it closer. As you bring it closer, you 
you can see it is you are bringing it closer and then you can stop it there as you stop it then you can go on to the topmost portion and then complete your fixture at this stage before putting the proximal screw what you must make sure is your cable wire test you must do that is you have to make sure the alignment is all right as Parit Kagda has already explained to you you have to check the hip center knee center and then the ankle center and make sure it is completely in alignment once that is done then you complete the fixation see this is how you complete your uh, surgery and then once you complete it one of the other technique also like when you are using it the within the hole that you are using like combi hole that you are want to uh, check it and then you you can use the steenman pin to get your locking hole properly in position so you through the jig use the steenman pin and then hold on to the locking hole so many times you will struggle to find out the locking hole so here you can see that is completely fixed and then your entire alignment was secured so by if you follow all the steps properly then there should never be a problem in your uh, fixation at all so here you can see that all this uh, locking plate though it has given excellent results but there are reports that you, it can fail from see in the, one of the report there was 20 percent failure actually it was 40 percent complication with 20 percent non-union and then in some of the for 25 percent had non-union rate and then here again there is a 22 percent non-union so that is our our literature is flooded with papers which also says there is complication involved with locking plate i feel that the complication rate is higher purely because for anything and everything now they started using the locking plate for the distal femur one of the key issue is the mall alignment so in the bargain of minimal invasive surgery they all do mall aligned mall aligned implant surgery so that is what you have to look mis if they take it is a mall aligned implant surgery so but if you follow all the principles i think you can do it completely well one of the first principle is that you have to have your the one of the central screw of this distal plate this uh, locking plate is that it always runs parallel to the joint line it is like early days we used to do what is called the summation wire technique so that is exactly same like that you use the similar principle then one of the screw must run parallel to the joint line if you make sure it is running parallel to the joint line that distal fragment gets aligned in this direction and laterally it has to run uh, that is if you take the cortex posterior cortex distal femur it must be parallel to the plate so if you take that then it should it should be fine and here you can see that in this fracture as i said if many times when they are uh, compressing it the uh, shaft becomes lateralized and the entire uh, distal metaphysis becomes medialized that is also because sometimes your positioning of the plate sometimes if you position the plate too posterior what happens is it can also push the plate too far medially that is also is important factor that you need to take into account <clears throat> So this is another correction that you have to do. So as I said, it is a posteriorly cortex must run parallel to the uh, plate uh, line. So if you uh, draw the line from the posterior margin of your plate and then the cortex, they must run parallel to each other. And when you are taking into alignment into account, it is also rotation. Sometimes when there is a rotational mall alignment, what happens is the surface area of contact becomes very less. And when there is a, when that happens again, non-union will result in and you will have to correct the non-union by another technique. See, like in the beginning of the talk by Farid Kagda, he said one of the uh, 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 defor deformity or rather uh, uh, force that is getting changed, that is the displacement that is taking place, that is the metaphysis that is widening, that has to be taken. It is, it is also not only rotating, the metaphysis also gets widened. If you don't take care of it, what happens if you fix it in that position, it is equivalent to a medial void. Why I am telling you like this? Because you see that the shaft is in a different diameter and then the distal femur is in different diameter. Suppose if there is a splaying, if there is a metaphysis that is widened and you keep the, the diaphysis straight, still there is contact is not there. So that is the reason that it is called it is also like a medial void so you have to correct the not only the metaphysis that is getting rotated 
but the metaphase is that is the articular margin that is rotated but the metaphase that is played also you will have to correct it if you correct it then there should not be any issue and then it will go on to heal well so this is one of the fracture you can see it has this this fracture has been fixed like this so you can see that it is not only like there is an articular uh, incongruency but also you can see that the metaphase has not been collapsed there is no inter fragmentary compression that has taken place and also you can see that the other condyle is not held very well itself because sometimes the plate if it is rotated if it is not held very well if the screws are going above that is going superior not posteriorly you know that as uh, parit kavde has put the first picture where it is a trapezoidal shape you will see that when you position the plate all the screw will get directed posteriorly suppose if you don't get tilted in that position if you keep it straight and put it all the screws will go anterior so if you if you are careful about positioning of the plate then this would not happen so you can see that it comes after two years then we will what you have to do is to get it again reduced and then you get the metaphysis to be compressed and then add fibula and then go on to get it into uh, union and then it goes on to heal well so this is something that you have to understand in the beginning itself so all these principles if you definitely follow well then your locking plates becomes a big boon for our forest to make it heal well on the contrary if it is indiscriminately used then it becomes a problem for uh, that's why i said locking plates is a big boon as well as the bane if provided if your knowledge in treating them is less so what i would like to end by saying is new technology is in good it is it is all about how people choose to use it this is what is the big thing that we need to understand in uh, locking plate fixation thank you very much mm -hmm.